everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. It's a beautiful summer day. And I was just sitting here thinking about how often things can look quite differently than what we think they are. Let me give you an example. So I have a drawing of an arrow here, right? And you go ahead and tell me which way you think the arrow is pointing. Is it pointing to your right or to your left? And if we move it this way or this way, the arrow continues to point in the same direction, doesn't it? Now watch this. I'm going to put a little bit of water in my glass here and all over my table. And now look what direction the arrow was pointing in. Anybody know? Anybody? It's pointing in the different direction, isn't it? It was pointing to the right and now it's pointing to the left. How crazy is that? And yet, if we remove it from the water, boom, it's pointing to the right again. Isn't that cool? Sometimes it's all a matter of perspective, of seeing things just a little bit differently. Let me give you another example here a minute. I'm going to wipe up my mess. Here's another example. For years, you've heard the story of the three little pigs, right? This is a story about the three pigs that lived in three different types of houses. The straw house, the stick house, and the brick house. And the big bad wolf comes and he blows them all down, right? It's a great story. Everybody loves this classic fairy tale. But this week in our Imagine Your Story program at the library, we're talking about fractured fairy tales. Fairy tales that don't go quite the way we're used to hearing them told. So I'm going to tell you... The true story of the three little pigs. And this one was written by A. Wolf, as told to John Sezeska and illustrated by Lane Smith. This is the true story of the three little pigs. I hope you guys will like this one. All right. Okay. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how the whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think that you were big and bad too. Mmm, cheeseburgers. I just like mine without tails and ears. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Bum, bum, bum. Way back in Once Upon a Time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold and I ran out of sugar. Oh no, no sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig. He built it and he wasn't too bright either. He'd built his whole house out of straw. No, not straws, straw. I'm slot prop guy. But you get the idea. They're not very flexible or not very sturdy. All right, can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind would build a house of straw or straws? You just don't do it. So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? There was no answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar from my dear old granny's birthday cake, and that's when my nose started to itch. Ugh, I felt the sneeze coming on. Ugh, well, I, I huffed, huh, and I snuffed. Ah, 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 ah. And I sneezed 
sneeze, a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. <laughs> yeah, sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house, but nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled back, Go away, wolf! You can't come in! I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin! Ooh, hope he doesn't cut himself. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I hopped, ah, and I snuffed, ah, ah, and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze! Ah, and you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Well, now you know that food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little bit better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have had the brains of the family. He had built his house out of bricks. <laughs> I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again! Wow, honestly. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed, ah, ah, and I snuffed, ah, 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 and I sneezed once again. Achoo! Then that little pig yelled, And your old granny, she can go sit on a pin. <laughs> well, now I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. And when the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Achoo! 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 Hoo! 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 Achoo! The rest, as they say, is history. Big Bad Wolf. A.T. Wolf. Big and Bad. And this one says, Wolf, I'll huff and I'll puff. And then this one says, Red Riding Hood settles dispute out of court. I won't read that article. The news reporters found out all about the two pigs I'd had for dinner, and they figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could give me a cup of sugar? Aw, he still wants to make a birthday cake for his dear old granny. So that's the true story of the three little pigs. That's quite a bit different from our earlier tale with the three little pigs on this story. But in either case, they're both excellent stories, and they tell a similar tale, and they're both a lot of fun to read. And there's a lot of fairy tales out there that are told in the original and then have a slightly different version of it. And I encourage you to come down to your local library and check them out. 
If you um, need help looking up titles, just go to the card catalog and type in fairy tales under the subject and all kinds of fairy tale stories will pop up. And we'll, Or ask your librarians. They'll be able to help you find fun fairy tales to read too. I sure hope you guys enjoyed our story today. Come back and stay tuned for our craft that we're going to make. It's going to be fun and delicious. I can't wait. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.